Hello and welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. For today's story, I want to talk about the color pink. I wore my pink shirt and I'm going to tell you about pink colored rocks. In fact, if you think about it, in a lot of the videos we've seen beautiful colors, greens and blues, red, orange, yellow, even pink. And for a lot of people, collecting rocks and minerals and studying rocks and minerals is fun because of the beautiful colors that they have. And so today I thought we'd talk about some of the pink specimens that I have. I want to start with this one right here. You might not have noticed behind how pink it is, but now with my shirt, you can see it's got a really pink color and it's a big rock too. Let me bring it a little bit closer. It's remarkably heavy also. This beautiful pink banded rock it's all one mineral. I'll tell you what it's called in just a second. But you can see, it's interesting, that pink color, but also see those kind of wavy layers there? All those wavy bands? That might give us a hint as to its formation, the story that this pink mineral tells. It turns out that this pink rock was formed in a cave. This was formed by water drip, drip, dripping in a cave, a dark cave. And where that water lands and gets deposited, maybe on a stalagmite on the bottom, or a stalactite hanging from the top, there are layers or bands in and around those stalactites and stalagmites. This mineral was made from water with CO2, carbon dioxide, drip, dripping into the cave and combining with manganese, an element, an ingredient called manganese. This rock is called rhodochrosite. That is a long mineral name, rhodochrosite. This rock is made of pure rhodochrosite mineral. It's one of my favorites. And the reason it's pink is because it has manganese as an ingredient. It's very similar to our chalk rock. Remember, chalk rock is made of calcium and CO2, but this one is white because there's no manganese. This one, instead of calcium, it's got loads of manganese. Manganese is one of the elements that we know likes to make color. Usually, manganese makes things pink like this beautiful rhodochrosite from our cave drippings, deep in the cave. We have other pink minerals too. This one, you remember this one from our iPhone rocks video? That's called Udiolite, and that beautiful pink color there is from manganese and probably a little bit of iron. Remember our pink feldspar in our granite from video number four? That pink color is also from a teeny tiny bit of iron. Sometimes you don't need a lot of that colorful ingredient, that chromophore element. Sometimes just a tiny bit, like in that pink feldspar, makes that beautiful color. I've got one more pink specimen I want to show you. It's this one back here. This is a beauty. I'm going to bring this one closer too. I hope you can see the beautiful pink color when I show you. Yeah, you can kind of tell. It seems even pinker in my hands. This is a giant chunk of a mineral that many of you know. This mineral is called quartz. Quartz is the second most abundant mineral in the continents. Feldspar is the most abundant mineral. But quartz is number two. And rose quartz is what this pink quartz is called. This is a sample of rose quartz. You see quartz is very common, second most common mineral in the continents. It's usually clear or white or gray, but sometimes it can be purple or orange or rarely rose colored, like my shirt. So a lot of people thought, well, that rose quartz is probably colored by some chemical ingredient, some elemental ingredient, maybe manganese making it colored. but. It wasn't until about 20 years ago, some scientists looked very carefully with a microscope so powerful 
You have to do it all inside a microscope laboratory. They used a microscope called a scanning electron microscope, SEM. We have one of those SEMs at Boston College. I'm going to show a picture of our SEM, and then I'll tell you what those other scientists found. Here's what an SEM lab looks like at Boston College. That's the microscope. It's as tall as a person. And then it shows on the, on the screens, like up there, what you can see in the microscope. There's all kinds of colors and things that you can see inside when you look at it with different light and different ways. Well, what these scientists did, they looked inside, deep inside, down to super tiny, tiny, tiny scale of observation with an SEM microscope. And do you know what they found inside the quartz that made it pink? It wasn't manganese. They found these hairy fibers. There's the name of the scientists in the article where they published this result. And look at all those little hairy fibers. It looks like hair or, or fabric coming apart. Those little hairy fibers are actually minerals hiding inside the rose quartz, microscopic minerals inside the rose quartz that had never been discovered before until they saw it. They didn't just believe, oh, there's probably just manganese making this pink. That's what makes the rhodochrosite pink and udiolite pink and other pink minerals. They looked carefully and they made a new observation by looking deep, deep into the rose quartz. Sometimes when you look very carefully, you find things that no one has found before. And people had been admiring and enjoying rose quartz for a long time. Rose quartz is pink because it has tiny fiber hair-like inclusions deep inside at the microscopic level that makes it pink. There was one more pink thing on the table, isn't there? Our Easter egg. This was from episode 9 talking about plastic. Now this isn't a mineral, but when people made this egg, they had to color it pink too. And so if you study the science of materials, material scientists learn how to use different chemical ingredients that they learn about from the natural world to figure out how to make these beautiful colors in plastics and other things that we make. So that's my story for the day. I wanted to tell you about the color pink and some of my favorite pink minerals and what makes them pink in the first place. Bye-bye.